I think I'll leave the real dancing to the professionals. Welcome back to another week of Musical March Madness. So we've got another session in two parts. The first is our new dance in three, which you may not have heard about before. The mazurka. I just played a little bit of one and tried dancing some of it. Then we have our instrument family, which I'm sure you have heard of before, the percussion instruments. That's how you make music mostly by hitting things, right? Drums, xylophones, or sometimes you scrape things, sand blocks, shake. All right, but first up, the mazurka. Remember where we went for last week's class? The Polonaise was from Poland. Well, this week for the Mazurka, we're not going anywhere. We're actually staying in Poland because the Mazurka is another Polish dance. Starting off today's class, I played a Mazurka by Chopin, who's the most famous of all Polish composers. He loved a good Mazurka or two, or 60, because that's about how many he wrote. So let's start right out by talking about the rhythm. By now, I'm hoping that all of you know what this would sound like. Even if you don't remember what they're called, that's okay. But you should all know that it sounds like ta, 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 or one, two, three. <clears throat> three steady beats that are all the same. Now, if you remember what they're called, congratulations, they are quarter notes. So we have three quarter notes. So some people call what we've been talking about in March things in three, one, two, three. They call that three-quarter time because there are three quarter notes. And that would look like this. There's three of them. And it's kind of like the fraction three-fourths or three-quarters without the line in between. So, all right. Now, and it's funny how it works. We've been talking about things in three, and now we're coming up with a third quarter of school is ending. So by a great coincidence, we're closing out the third quarter with more three-quarter time. All right, now that doesn't tell us anything about whether it's a waltz, minuet, polonaise, mazurka. So the mazurka rhythm, we have to take that first beat and subdivide it into four smaller beats. I'll talk more about 16th notes and all that after the break, but basically what you need to think in your brain is taka taka ta ta taka taka ta ta one, two, three, four, ta ta one, two, three, four, right? Four little beats on that first beat and we're actually going to do, instead of one, two, three, four, we're taking out the middle two. So it's like we have, oh, it's like I love you, right? So we've got one, four, bum, bum, da, 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 da. If that doesn't make sense to you, it's okay. I'll just show you how to write the rhythm. Looks like this. All right, so here is our mazurka rhythm. I'm writing it nice and big so you can see. That is what we are listening for. So, all right, let me put that up at the top. Ba ba bum bum ba ba bum bum. Pretty much every mazurka, whether it's fast or slow, fast would be ba ba dum bum ba ba dum bum. Slow would be ba ba dum bum. So I'm gonna play a bunch of mazurkas now with this rhythm behind me. You'll get to see it and listen for it. I almost forgot to write the name of it for you. Mazurka, there it is, M-A-Z-U-R-K-A. -A. Mazurka is the name of the dance and the music, or you could say mazurka, but in English, mazurka is fine. Now let's listen for that rhythm. So you want to listen for ba ba dum bum ba ba dum bum one, two, three. Let me play the first thing that I played today. It sounds like this, a one, two, three. That's pretty much every measure has that rhythm. Definitely a mazurka. Let's go back a page. This one's slower. So it's like one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, definitely got that rhythm. Uh, Bump. Ooh, now it doesn't always show up in the beginning. See if you can catch where that rhythm shows up in this one. Did you hear it? So at first it 
sounds almost like a waltz, right? One and two and three and one and two and three. And then all of a sudden, ba ba da ba. Let me do it one more time. I'll see if I can look at you when it happens. Okay, let's do one more uh, because this is Chopin. He wrote like 60 of these. I'm not going to play all of them today. All right, this one's nice and triumphant. Listen for that. Ba ba dum ba. One, two, three. Well, I might need to practice it a little bit more, but that's all right. Now it's time to watch a couple dancing. So. As you watch the dance, listen for that ba ba dum bump ba ba dum bump rhythm. Did you hear the rhythm? Now notice that couple did a bunch of kind of jumping, hopping steps too, because this rhythm kind of makes you want to do that, right? Ba ba ba. It's a little like a hiccup. So a lot of the steps of the mazurka have some hopping and jumping, or even foot stomping, making noise with your feet, um, because the mazurka originally came from the peasants, like the the common people of Poland, uh, but the step caught on and was so, the mazurka was so popular, it spread eventually to the nobles and higher classes, the royal courts. Uh, so I'd like you to watch a little bit of a sort of a history overview of the mazurka. You're going to hear people speaking in different languages. You're going to hear some Polish and some German because remember Germany on our map was right next to Poland. So in case you're wondering what languages you're hearing, there's an English translation, but you'll hear some Polish and German. All right. More about the mazurka. The folk group Mazowsze has gained worldwide acclaim with its renditions of Polish dances, especially the mazurka, a lively Polish folk dance in triple time. Ballet mistress Violeta Milchuk is not worried about the future of folk dancing in Poland. Children here even learn how to dance the mazurka at school. The popularity has to do with history. The mazurka is Poland's calling card. Poles identify with it and use it to show where their roots lie. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the mazurka was danced at court. Nobles would meet and dance in different countries, so the dance became famous internationally. Magdalena Jankowska grew up in Germany, but her parents were Polish. She decided to move to Poland to pursue her dancing career. The partner zeigt, dass er führt. In the mazurka, the partner shows that he's leading, but the lady is his most important diamond, his gem, so to speak. So even the position of his hands shows that he's protecting her. There's a position where he holds her hand and protects her head from behind. Poland's flat Mazovia region is renowned for its rivers and forests. The composer Frédéric Chopin was born in the small village of Zelazowa Wola, some 65 kilometers west of the capital Warsaw in 1810. His mother was Polish and his father was French. He composed 51 mazurkas, which helped him win international fame. Krzysztof Kaziajek is in the room where the composer was born, playing Opus 50, number three, a mazurka, of course. Mm -hmm. 
You can clearly detect the dance's influence from the three-quarter time. Chopin then composed variations of this in his works. Music expert Teresa Novak says that Chopin wanted to make a political statement. When Chopin started composing mazurkas, Poland was under Russian rule. So it was important to compose Polish music for Poland's national identity. All his life, Chopin tried to create a Polish national style. Today, Poland's national anthem is a mazurka. It was when Chopin spent the summer of 1828 at Saniki Palace, west of Warsaw, that he came into close contact with the dance, seeing and hearing it performed locally. Today, young people continue to dance the mazurka. It's very special to dance it. But I'm from the region of Saniki, so it was easier for me to learn. The Mazurka, a dance from Poland that's known around the world. Now I'd like to show you some real ballet dancers doing a fast Mazurka. Now remember that crazy bow that I did at the beginning of class after I played the mazurka? Well, that's what these dancers do. Now I'm going to do it slowly because I'm not a trained ballet dancer. But it looks a little bit like this. You can try it with me if you want or just watch. Um, so you cross one foot over, kind of points it a little. Your arm goes something like this in and out. And then you put your knees together, kind of turned in. And then click your heels together and up you go as you twist your hand like that. So now there's a reason they click their heels together at the end. A lot of the steps came from the fact that people rode horses back a long time ago. So imagine you had some big horse riding boots on, big boot here, big boot there. At the end of each boot, you've got spurs sticking out, right? So you've got your two spurs and that's what happens when you click your heels together, there'd be a little sound. So that's where that step came from. I'm going to do it again really slowly. Okay, so it's something like this. You cross over and out, knees together and up. And I'll do it a little faster. Like this, in, out. I'm not even going to try doing it in time to the music because it goes so fast. It's like ba ba da ba 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 da ba one, two, three, ba ba da ba but these are Russian ballet dancers. So this is from Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Look for that bow in the very beginning of this clip. Now I'd like to show you the most basic mazurka step. Um, and if you're in a classroom, it's not going to move forward that much, so you can get up and try it if you want. Don't worry, it took me a long time, so if you don't get it right away, that's okay too. Now I learned this from a woman who came from a co the country Ukraine originally. She was a ballet dancer, and uh, I played for her for many summers. I finally decided I'm going to try learning this step too. Now remember, Ukraine is right next to Poland, so I'm sure that she knows the step very well. I'm still working on it. All right, so it's three beats because it's in three. I'm gonna go super slow. You can start with either foot. I'm gonna start with this one because we're doing the same thing on both feet. So step one is this, you just step. That's easy, right? I'm gonna keep my hands on my hips for this one. And then ha is beat two. That's not so bad. Beat three, now you wanna keep the same foot on the ground. You can do another kind of like little hop with this third, this foot swings forward. That's three. Oops, I almost fell over. Let me try that again. I'm going to do the other foot now. So it's step, hop, and then we call this a chug. 
where this other foot swings out and this foot stays down. I'm going to try it now, both um, two, two steps in a row. So here I go, it's like step, hop, chug, step, hop, chug. Let me try that again. So it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. And you don't have to jump very high. It's your kind of staying close to the ground. Let me try that one more time and I'll go a little bit faster. So it's like one, two, three. One, two, three. And you can even stay in place if you want. Um, you're supposed to move forward, but I know we're in classrooms and you can't really move that much. So it's like step, hop, chug, step, hop, chug, step, hop, chug, step, hop. And if you wanted to put an arm to it, it would be something like this. It's like step, hop, chug, step, hop, chug, step. That's about the final tempo. Whew, that's all I'm going to do on it. So now you're going to watch some real ballet dancers do that step. Now you're going to see before it all begins, a guy's going to come out dressed in red. He's going to do that fancy bow, right, with his heel clicking. Does it a lot better than I do. Then when the dancers come out to do the mazurka, they all do that fancy bow too, and then they're going to just do the step, hop, chug, step, hop, chug. And of course, they look a lot better than me. So here we are, one more mazurka from a ballet called Coppelia. Well, those dancers make it look so easy. Well, it probably is easier for them because they've been working at it for years. All right, now, that's enough of the mazurka for now. I thought, let's get on to our percussion instruments. So I'd like to invite our friends back from the House of Sound. They've done such a great job explaining all the other instrument families. So I believe their names are Greg and Fran. So here we are, give it up for Greg and Fran from the House of Sound. is all about the planet Mars, and it was composed by a man called Gustav Holst. Ah, but did you know that Mars was also the Roman god of war? Oh, that's why it makes me think of soldiers marching into battle. Do you know what it makes me think of? What? That we should actually explain how these drums work. Good idea. Drums have been around for a long, long time, and they were often used in war. A drum has been found by archaeologists in a place called Moravia in Europe, and it turned out to be eight thousand years old. Whoa! But drums are pretty simple instruments. They're called percussion instruments. And percussion just means one thing hitting another. Thank you. And so to play a drum, all you need to do is hit it. That is beautiful, Greg. Thanks. But as well as the drum, other percussion instruments include the triangle. Thank you. The tambourine. And the symbols. Are you sure? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh. That's pretty loud. <sighs> Drums come in all shapes and sizes, but basically each of them is a hollow body which has a skin over the top. And the skin is stretched very, very tight. When you bang a drum, the skin vibrates. The vibration of the drum makes the air particles inside and around the drum vibrate too, and this forms sound waves. The sound waves travel out in all directions, and if they reach your ears, that means you'll hear the sound of the drum. Right, so we have got this drum here, and let's imagine that this confetti are the tiny particles that make up air, the air molecules. Okay? And watch what happens when I hit the drum. Thank you. Whoa, <laughs> that's good. That is awesome. That is cool. 
So when the skin of the drum vibrates, it makes the air molecules, the confetti, also vibrate and bounce into the air. Oh, I think we're going to see this much better if we use my super slow-mo camera. OK, go. So there's the hit. It sets the drum skin vibrating. It chucks that musical confetti into the air, just like the air molecules are vibrating above the drum skin. And you can still see the skin vibrating. <laughs> it is awesome. It's brilliant. Looks amazing. So sound waves are invisible, but another way of imagining how they work is to use this bowl of water and a tuning fork. Tuning forks are used by musicians to make sure that their instruments are playing the right notes. And they work by simply banging them, and then they play a certain note. Ooh, nice. This one plays the note E. Oh, which means that I can tune the E string on my guitar. Go on. Let's do it. You there? That's it. Now, if I bang this tuning fork again, but this time put it into this bowl of water, watch what happens. Oh, so let's use our super slow-mo camera and get a closer look. Oh, in super slow-mo, you can see that the tuning fork wobbles. It's those vibrations that make the sound waves. And it's the same vibrations that get the water all excited too. And it's quite a good way just to spread water everywhere, to be honest with you. It is, isn't it? Now, you may not realise it, but you actually have one of these inside here. Yes, inside your ear is something called your ear drum. It's like a drum because there is a thin piece of skin-like tissue stretched tight across the opening between your outer ear canal and your middle ear. When the sound waves hit your eardrum, they make it vibrate, just like when Fran hit the skin of her drum earlier. The middle ear and the inner ear convert those vibrations into signals that our brains interpret as sounds. Now, excuse me, big drums have a lot of air inside them, and when a drum has a lot of air to vibrate, it makes a low sound. It has what we call a low pitch. This little drum has less air inside it. And when you have less air to vibrate, you get a sound with a high pitch. Nice. But you can also change the sound a drum makes in other ways too. So this drum has a skin which you can make tighter or slacker by turning these handles. So at the moment, the drum sounds like this. And if we tighten the skin, it sounds like this. Higher. You can even tighten the skin as you're playing it as well to change the pitch. The other thing that's interesting is that the harder you hit the skin, the larger the vibrations and the louder the sound. But the lighter you hit the skin, the smaller the vibrations and the quieter the sound. And that is what we call... Volume! There are lots of different types of drums and drum sounds. You can play just one drum, like, like a marching drum. Thanks, that's enough. That's, thanks, that's, that's great. Cheers, thank you. Or you can, or you can put lots of different drums together to make a drum kit, and that is exactly what we're going to do right now. In. Oh, one, two, three, four! Yes! Done! Look at that! Now, what we've got here is down here we've got a cardboard box, which is like our bass drum, which we can hit like that. This is my favourite bit. It's cool. Brilliant. We've got our beautiful cymbal right here. Now, these. These are the drums. And this one, this one's got a little bit of Greg's spare change on top, so that's our snare drum. Nice sound. And to finish off, we have our big bin drum. Now, actually, there's one more thing we need. An old oil can that I've scrubbed clean. Now, I think, we are ready to rock. The, the, the largest drum ever made is a South Korean chongo drum. However, if 
you want to make drums that are simple and easy to make, fun to play, and cost hardly anything, then we are going to show you how. What you need is a plastic cup, elastic band, a balloon, and some scissors. Now be careful with the scissors. And what you do is you take the balloon and you simply just snip off the neck of the balloon like that. Then you just need to place it over your cup. And it's really important to stretch it completely with no lumps and bumps in. And then you take the elastic band and tighten it up. Can you just help me with this, Greg? Sure. Can you just put it over? One, two. And there you go. That is your drum made. Greg, can you just patch up in that kitchen mallet? Yes. Thank you. And you just hit it. Works well. Uh, you can make other types of percussion instruments as well by adding rice or I've got some popcorn here that hasn't been popped yet. You can just put that inside the bottom of your cup and... Ah, oh, it makes like maracas! I like that! That's pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty cool, but I've got to say I think my homemade drum kit wins this one. Take it away, Mr Hulse. Let's go to Mars! <laughs> Here's the part of the video where I could have made my own homemade percussion, but um, I didn't want the video to be too long, so I just looked around in the garage and found a few things. You could all try this at home too, I'm sure you all have percussion. So basically, if it doesn't have strings and you're not blowing into it, so it's not a woodwind or brass instrument, then it's pretty much percussion. So uh, mostly things you can hit, but also scrape. So let's see, I just looked around, I found, I brought a pencil with me, let's see, I've got pencil to the coffee can. I took the lid off so you can really hear it. Sounds pretty good. I found this old paint can. It's a different sound, right? Also, the paint can has ridges on the side. So you could have two instruments in one. Something like that for a, a hit, something you hit and scrape. Uh, let's see, I found this old, uh, well not that old, but spice. Spice jar, plastic spice jar. Let's see what else. Uh, pie tin. Combine that with maybe the tennis canister. Two different sounds, so you get two two effects. My grandma's old TV tray. You could do something with that. Oh, now let's bring back this. I blew into this as a brass instrument. Um, a few weeks ago, but notice the edge, it's very, it's got lots of uh, ridges on it, so it could be kind of a long, scrapey thing. Go all the way around, maybe. Anyway, just some ideas. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, the PVC tubes. Let's bring those back, too. Well, you could also, you could hit them on the floor. Um, also, this is kind of a fun thing you could do. If you can find this shoe doesn't work as well, but if you had a flip-flop or something that was really flat, you um, bang the ends like this. Let's see if maybe this ends better. Oh, that's better. Yeah, you want to really hit it hard. You want something flat that's really going to seal off the tube, ideally. This one, there's another longer PVC pipe. Hmm, pretty interesting. So you could combine them. Let's see. Anyway, just ideas. What else? Oh, I also found a whisk broom. You can't really hear it on the floor that much. But if you had, oh, there's this baseball backpack. So there we have it. You can combine them, maybe get the rest of your family in on it. So just make sure you're not disturbing anyone. So um, that's about it for the homemade percussion. I haven't even touched the surface of various containers, boxes. I'm sure you have those lying around too or even stuff in the kitchen. So, all right. Well, I think it's time to go back to Bethany. Back in the choir room, I thought we'd finish off our musical March Madness by taking a little review of what we did this month. Let's see, we had first the uh, minuet, we had the waltz, we had the polonaise, and then the mazurka. So four different dances all in three. So I thought, let's take a song that all of you know 
Amazing Grace. That's in three, right? So I thought, let's sing Amazing Grace, and we're going to run it through all four of those styles just to recap the March Madness. So first up, Amazing Grace in the style of a minuet. So I've got to get my nose in the air. We're back in the royal courts of Europe. Next up, the waltz, right? It's a more swingy thing. Let's see. All right, I've got it. Let's see, here's the intro. All right, next up, the Polonaise, Polonaise. I still can't figure out which way to say it. Let's see, one and a two and three and one and a two. Mazurka! Well, that's it. I won't lie, I'll do the fancy bow. All right, I think. That is probably our last music class until spring break, though I could be wrong. So if I don't see you before then, have a fantastic spring break. Congratulations on making it through the first three quarters of the school year, which means we only have one more quarter. So, And what we have for music, I don't know yet, but I will know after spring break. So that's all. I'll see you later.